Okay, uh, welcome to this hearing via Zoom of the Local Historic District Commission. We seek to aid property owners and the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant in the history of Amherst. Um, Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone and a hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. We require one of three certificates to ensure that new construction and most alterations of exterior architectural features in the district meet requirements. Uh, this hearing is open to the public and is being recorded. Uh, and we're gonna start with Mr. Malloy uh, summarizing the applications and then uh, the applicant can speak and then we'll talk about them. So, uh, Nate, do you wanna begin? Yeah, I guess I'll ask if there's anyone here for 14 Gray Street, if you raise your hand or, all right. We'll bring you in for, as a panelist. And so you can, it'll ask you if you wanna join. Hi, Brad. So you can unmute yourself and then um, you're free to, you know, give a presentation or share your screen or I can at your request, I'm not, however you'd want it to work. Sure. I mean, if you want to show the drawings that I've submitted, that would be great. Um, the essential request in this application is to extend the existing fence, the privacy fence along um, the existing property line in the south of the property. Um, in the same form and fashion as the existing fence uh, to complete that privacy fence and then to put in place a uh, just an encapsulation fence around their yard where there's existing um, architect or existing Arbor Valley feature features along the property line with my neighbors. Um, I understand that the, this group is not consider um, plantings when considering about things being visible from the right of way, but largely these should be invisible to the to the eye of passersby. Um, the intent is to be a uh, minimally apparent fence, um, shorter than the existing features and existing fences, uh, mostly just for, I have small children and a dog that I'd like to not have, you know, run about on the busy streets. Yeah, I'll just add to that, you know, this is what's online in the packet and what was submitted. So here's, you know, existing fences in blue, proposed in green, and then a new fence in red. Here's 14 Gray Street. Here's Gray Street. High Street is just, or Main Street is just, you know, south, just off the page. Uh, you could zoom in just a little bit. So here's the existing fence, which would be matched. And then, you know, hog panel fence is um, like a gridded wire panel with, you know, wood, you know, wood framing. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the specifications for, for that one kind of fence. Let's see what else we have here. And then, um, you know, here's just some images of what it would look like. And so uh, it is visible from, you know, from Gray Street and Main Street. Yeah, my, my plan is that it would be, the, exi the existing style and form would be the part visible from main and gray, um, I guess, you know, the, ga the gate along the side of the house, kind of in the uh, the picture to the left here, you'd be able to see a little bit of it there as well. Are there questions from the commission? Uh, none for me, it, it seems uh, pretty reasonable and pretty clear. Does anyone else have any concerns? I can understand with small children where you might want to have a fence there. It's a beautiful house too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The idea is just minimalist, functional, fitting with the design. Yeah. It's kind of nice in a way that the kids can see through, that you can see through it. Yeah. The type, the type of fence won't be very eye stopping or anything like that. Yes, uh, uh, my daughter and son-in-law put a fence like that. I helped them. So uh, I've already committed to this type of fence, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, it sounds to me like we're perhaps ready to approve this certificate. Uh, well, there are, oh, sorry, just quickly. There are some members. Of, um, there's six oh. other attendees, public attendees, if we'd want to have any public comment. Is 
Is there anyone in the public who would like to come in on this? You could raise your hand if you do. I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Mm. All right, then let's move to a vote. Uh, to, this is to approve the certificate for this fence. Karin? Um, I, I approve. Uh, Elizabeth? Yes, I approve. Nicole? Yes, approve. Rita? I approve. Steve? Uh, mm. Yes. And Bruce? Yes. And I also approve it. So, uh, Brad, I think you're all set. We have approved your certificate, and um, Nate will be producing that, and I will be signing it for you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to this hearing. Okay, should we move to the next request? Yeah. So the next one is um sorry, just waiting for Zoom for a second. Yeah, there we are. It's forty one forty three fearing. If there's anyone here they could raise their hand. The speaker present. Hmm. Do we have anyone? Uh, 43 fearing. Is there anyone here for 43 fearing? Now, I had spoken with a contractor. I know he um, had a, you know, had trouble. His computer was broken. He was going to call in and I had but I'd emailed the owners and spoken with them and they were away, but they were going to try to attend. Um, I, I just walked past this house and uh, they've already made the changes. Right. Um, no one's here. I, I I can I can I'll share my screen and I'll run through the the um the what the changes. Let me just see the but yeah, this if, if, is that visible for everyone? Yep. Yes, it so is this was me. the exist this was the existing um it's looking at the second floor um or so you know there's a uh railings and there's like a double rail on top uh, that was added later because you know this existing railing wasn't up to code for height and mm -hmm. i think the decking needed to be replaced you can see there's some damage over here and so the proposal was to then um you know put install new railings you know decking and structural you know um joists underneath that we we can't see um, but this is what Sorry, but I was going to zoom in. This is what it looks like now. So it, it hasn't it hasn't been trimmed. It hasn't been finished, but they did, you know, put new railings uh, and other things. Um, what they're using is, um, you know, this railing system from you know Timber Tech, and so it's I guess yeah, like Nancy said, it's already installed. It, you know, it looks similar, but not. You know, there's a slight difference between what was there uh, and what you know what it looks like now. So uh, a question, Nate, um, did these folks have a building permit initially to do this or did they just move ahead and, and uh, do it? Yeah, the building permit wasn't issued either. So that's uh, what I was wondering, because otherwise Rob would have, uh, I would have thought, directed him here, uh, directed the applicants here. Right. So, yeah, there was some difficulty getting the contractor to complete all the paperwork for both permits. Yes, it's uh, when I would have thought the contractor would have known uh, A, full well that a building permit was necessary and B, given how conspicuous the work is, that uh, he would uh, be hauled in if he didn't do that. But apparently neither of those, uh, the contractor was not aware of either of those two possibilities. So this is... Uh, um, somebody who's very un, uh, un, uh, very new to the game of building, I'm guessing. No, I think, uh, you know, we went to an online permitting system and the yeah. contractor doesn't use computers. And so uh, I think it was more about a lack of understanding, uh, you know, how to submit things. Yeah. 
Okay. You know, so, you know, I have spoken with one of the building inspectors that was assigned to this and Rob Moore. And I said, you know, what we typically do here is just try to get this into compliance. So, yeah. you know, we're still trying to get information for the building um, permit in terms of its structure. So, you know, we don't necessarily care, you know, what kind of joists they were using, you know, what kind of, does it meet building code? We're looking at the aesthetic piece, but you know, that's what was holding up the building permit. You know, they needed a framing plan and then a few other pieces. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so as I saw what you showed, and I looked at it earlier online, I, I only got back from Europe after five weeks last night, so I didn't drive over and have a look at it in the flesh. But it looked um, uh, virtually identical. I mean, the major differential is the, the fact that the, the, the railing, you know, the, the, the double rail, it's being, put, it's being put at the uh, appropriate height from a building code point of view in 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 the first instance here so the second railing isn't uh, necessary so it seems uh, uh, i couldn't see anything that looked as though it was not a you know a replication of what was there or as close as possible frida i think that the only difference that i noticed was that the um space between the rails is greater now than it used to be so it used to be the same as the deck first floor, but now it's wider between the two, between the rails. Oh, oh, this. Uh, oh, I. Uh, could you bring that up again, Nate? Sure. It looks like someone had raised their hand, Edward. Uh, they, yeah, I. My. I immediately went to that. That it was uh, not the same. The distance between the uprights were not the same. Right. I mean, if, yeah. if this had come to us before they had done it, I would absolutely have asked that those vertical pieces be the same. And they used to be the same for yeah, the so, first three, but not for, I mean, they could have repaired it. So that's, do you see the difference now, Bruce? Yes, I do. House? And yeah. if you look at the old picture of the house. Yeah. Yeah, they were the see, same. They were mm. the same. Yeah. And that, Edward, I'm gonna allow you to talk. I don't know if you're. Or Edwin, if, are you here to represent the project? You'll have to unmute yourself. Hello? 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 Yes. Hi, my name is Edwin Gensler. I'm, I'm the owner of uh, 43 Fearing, and uh, Ward Welcome uh, did the uh, work on the, the deck, and um, I can answer some of your questions. I can't answer them all. Um, this was put in some 25 years ago by uh, what was his name, Lance Hottis, uh, and I put in mahogany and all sorts of nice materials, and I thought they would last, but they did deteriorate. Some moisture got in underneath, and some of the joints deteriorated. So uh, I asked the Lord welcome. I think he's a, done quite a bit of work around Banners. Um, to uh, replace the deck and uh, repair the railing. And he couldn't, I asked him to match it as closely as he could. Um, I like the, uh, I like everything about what uh, Lance did before. He matched the columns, he matched the style of the house. He even found five panel doors that fit with the architecture and um so i think ward did a very good job i did ask him to use uh materials that would have a longer life because that uh, with the snow and the rain and the wind and the leaves that uh, deck does take a, a certain degree of um uh, of, uh, of weather and I, i'm pretty pleased with how it turned out um the um, 
This also just pertains to the first time you get it. And um, they looked at it pretty closely and I matched as, as much as I could uh, the original plan. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with uh, what the war did. What, it did deteriorate underneath the deck. I think they was tying two by fours and four by sixes underneath. So Ward Welcome left the um, the underneath open for uh, whomever wanted to come by and and take a look on the on the construction. But uh, I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and I think the integrity of the house is pretty well maintained. Mm -hmm. So, if I may, the question then is, uh, are we satisfied uh, with the baluster spacing or would we ask that they be uh, reinstalled in a closer, free, uh, 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 closer together? Um, this is a, an artificial, it's not wood. Uh, Lance had his own lathes and his own workshop, and he could uh, he could reproduce uh, materials pretty easily. This is uh, uh, a prefab that uh, was I think I think Ward purchased it from uh, Lowe's. I'm not one hundred percent sure of that, um, and it was it's the top of the line of what they had. The, um, the, um, the the difficulty was getting the height correct. I, I wanted the, the higher level because I don't want any problems with the, anybody having uh, falling off. And that's what the Historical Commission did last time. They maybe put a little double railing in the top. I think you can see that from the photos. This time the railing is manufactured to be at a higher height. Uh, I don't think it would have been this commission that would have asked for a double railing because we didn't exist, I don't think, at that uh, time. Well, that could be. That could be. I'm, I think this is the first time the Historical Commission has looked at this. Um, so I, I think that's probably correct. Are you aware that you were supposed to have come to the Historical Commission before doing this work? The Local Historic District Commission. The Local Historic, sorry. Yes, uh, local historic district. You know, I sort of left the permitting to uh, the constructor. Uh, and I think... My understanding is, is that he did get a permit to do at least the construction. Now, whether or not that was with the historical commission or not, once again, I can't say. Um, he did say that uh, someone from the historical commission would probably come by and take a look at it at some point. Uh, I think, uh, regardless of all the history and so forth, it seems that uh, we just have to decide whether we're satisfied with the uh, with the fait accompli, or whether we want to ask that those uh, balances be put uh, closer. Um, I'm not. A, I don't know the system that's been purchased. Uh, I imagine that it's, it's probably a matter of buying more of the balusters and. Uh, uh, they, uh, but I think that would be the question. If 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 the if the system that has been purchased here has got uh, a certain is, is manufactured to 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 accept balusters, the vertical pieces, only at the spacing that we see. In other words, whether there's some kind of lock-in arrangement or whether there's just a a slot and you can install and fasten. As many of these as uh, as you would choose, 
um, I don't know because I'm not familiar with the, the propriety right. line. My understanding is that this is a kind of a prefab construction. And Ward said if we would make more of them, he doesn't have the workshop to do it. It would, it would, he would just buy it would more. It would have to be custom made and custom fitted. It would not would drive up the cost considerably. You no, I don't. This kind of, uh, deck and railing i'm sure at various uh uh homes in the um in the amish communities so uh what do the other commissioners think about this I just have a question. I wonder if you're going to finish the um, the raw wood that I see. Is that going to be the diagonal? Right. right. We've already the, the boards are ready to install at any point. I do think that there was. A, I'm, I would say I won't say I'm a hundred percent sure, but I'm ninety eight percent sure that Ward Welcome did pull a permit for this and that he left this open for the building inspectors to come take a look at what's underneath. And as soon as okay. that's approved, the, the, the finishing pieces will go up. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. So uh, let me ask, is there anyone who does not wish to approve this at this point? Uh, Betty, would you speak? Yeah, I'd like to have a little more discussion about it um, because the question is, if it had come to us uh, with this as the plan um, and not had been already done, um, would we have approved it or would we have had made the suggestion that the balusters, et cetera, should match as it had done before the lower um, fencing, uh, the lower, you know, around the... Um, boundary around the porch um so and then the question is if people go ahead and just make the changes themselves for whatever reason whether um that does set a precedence for skirting the issues skirting the desires of the committee yes i agree with you karen um can can you hear me yeah yes okay I think it's a cost question too. And I think we have to be careful to demand uh, that people put a lot of money into restoring something. I think that this is a prefab thing, unless I'm wrong. And to have it match probably would have been a custom thing. Now, it's it would have been a nice thing beforehand for us with, for, for um, Ward to be able to discuss that with us. And just as we, you know, the little house across from me, we decided um, it was okay. They could they could put in different windows, even though we like the matching, the antique. She said, it's just that they're so much more expensive. And we, as the local historical society, we, we have to be careful to not, uh, you know, demand that people go really overboard in putting custom, I, I'm sure this would be thousands, I, I'm pretty sure this would be thousands of dollars more if he couldn't go with a kind of a prefab sort of thing. So um, it shouldn't be a precedent that you should just go up and do what you want, but I don't think that, that it will be. I think we have to make sure that we get our word out more that these are the things that have to be approved but um, I, I'm ready to approve it as, as is because of that. Frida. I think I agree with Karen. Um, it is a judgment call. I mean, I, um, and it is hard. It would be a lot more expensive. I think it would have, it would look better to me to have the same on the bottom as the top. But I also know um, it's hard to be a homeowner um, 
and it's expensive and so and right. i think maybe yeah. we could talk to the builder about um the builders too about coming to us first yeah i'm surprised that ward welcome has not communicated with you i think we did intend to be at this meeting uh i know his wife does have a computer uh that that's a bit of a surprise and i my understanding was that he had been in touch with you uh really more more than a single occasion as the project uh continued so that comes as a bit of a surprise to me um the first deck that i put in with the mahogany was uh yeah i think it Started at about forty-five thousand dollars and grew to about seventy-five thousand. And I swore I would never do that again. By the time he went, he would go to his lab and make more and more of those. Uh, you know, they're all the the top for beveled. And, uh, um, it it was cost prohibitive, and then the weather. Yeah, we had some snow phone where the snow was four or five feet deep up there. I mean, it was just, uh, it was really rough on the materials. Well, it's pretty clean. We looked at a couple of different types of materials that were available. The wood is just beautiful. It looks it looks just like mahogany, you know, it's pressure treated. Uh, some of these, uh, I don't know what you call it, tree fab, or the material is, it's really getting quite good, uh, some of those materials. I'm, I really wanted to, as closely as possible, retain the structural integrity of the house. And I tried very hard. And um, yeah, we spent a lot of time figuring out cost and results and integrity. All of these were, 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 were serious considerations. So I think there's some nice things about the way it's been done. The the columns line up in a nice way. Uh, there's some things that look better. I'm I'm still very unhappy about the fact that you didn't come here first uh, because we would have liked to have had this conversation with you yes, before you put this in. I would have too. Yes. Um, Betty, um, I want to ask the question: Do we know? that there aren't other prefab systems that have the narrower spacing? Good question. I'm, good I'm, question. I'm and I did look at that. Um, the original uh, cases is support, they're, they are very close together, uh, unusually so. I have looked at other balconies and decks in the town of Amish. And I haven't seen any of them with those, uh, I don't even know what to call them, those casings so close together. So I don't, if I could have found a prefab that would have uh, replicated that, I, I think I would have purchased that and I would have been willing to pay Pay more, but it is a it's an unusually tight uh, style. Uh, I, th I think it's actually pretty typical for the period. I, I think we've got the same at you our house. And I, okay. I think most porches around here have very close uh, balustrades if they were done built during that time period. That period. But it, but I know that to have them replaced uh, is expensive. I've I've had them replaced. Yeah. Um, and I understand the problem. Um, I think it's time for us to perhaps take a vote on whether to move forward with this. And Nancy, mm -hmm. you're going to recognize me. I've had my hand up for a very long time. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, your hand is against a yellow background, and I didn't see it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm I'm more with Elizabeth. The it's it's not clear to me. It's not clear to me that this system can't have the balusters closer. I went online in the interim and looked at the uh, timber tech system and so forth. The The spacing is based on a code uh, 
requirement for a minimum of five, um, a maximum of five inches of gap, which is presumed to be the size of a child's head. Um, it's not clear to me, and if the builder was here, he could perhaps enlighten me that these, uh, that these, uh, that you couldn't just buy more of these balusters and install them at a closer spacing, regardless. Uh, I don't think you necessarily have to go and find another system. Um, we need to know whether this system is uh, flexible enough to have accepted the balusters and still is, uh, at a closer spacing. And the contractor could tell us that, or I could drive down to Lowell's and find out. Um, but, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm not inclined to, uh, agree to something that's been done retroactively when the, when the contractor who's, who did it isn't even here to answer a basic question about whether the purchase of, uh, uh, a certain number of additional, um, balusters wouldn't solve, wouldn't allow them to be installed at the place of spacing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's, we're not talking thousands of dollars here. If the system is flexible in that regard, it's, it, I mean, it, it'll it'll cost some money to take the, the current balusters out and replace them at a closer spacing. But that maybe is the cost of, uh, of, 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 of not uh, coming and asking in the first place. Are you, are you reckon on me? Yeah, I would agree with Bruce and Elizabeth as well. Is, there's another project on pairing. Remember that the contractor never shows up. This has been not. We need to take a stand, I think. And I don't. I don't think it's onerous to see if we can. If there can be more struts put in. I also have another issue, which is unrelated, but isn't on the stairs going up. Aren't there by code is supposed to be for safety railings, or is that grandfathered in? So it doesn't. It, I mean, it's not under. Um, I'm. It's, I'm just a question to Nate. Because I know that for most steps approaching, there are supposed to be handrails. If they're 30 inches high. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it could be that this, I was just looking at, there's three steps. I mean, it might be under the height threshold. I don't, yeah. Yeah, it's not a biggie. I just was curious. Aunt Betty? I wondered if we could table a vote on this until we get a little more information. If we ask the homeowner and the um, contractor to get back in touch and see if the um, balustrade system can be retrofitted, as Bruce suggests, or whether there's an a, a, another system of this type. I mean, I, I don't mind the synthetic um, that that would work. Would you like then to make a could, motion to that? that excuse me. Would you like to make a motion to that effect to table this? Well, no. So we'd yes. have to continue it to a date certain. It's an open public hearing, and so, you know, I would suggest November twentieth, which would give us time to advertise additional hearings. Um, this could be first on the agenda. I'll also say that um, uh, if Edwin is still here, that you know we're, the commission is, needs to issue a certificate within so many days, and if it extends beyond that, then either it's constructively granted or it's denied. And so, you know, we, I'd want you to agree today that you would sign this waiver that the, that the, um, that the commission may not make a decision within 60 days. And if not, then we would just deny it. And so, you know, it, that's, that's the only way that this can proceed with a continuance is if we get, have that, you know, uh, response from the owner or, you know, the representative now saying that they would agree to sign a waiver. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, the um, the contractor had reached out to the town and was told long before the work happened that it needed both a building permit and a local historic district certificate, and it was never followed through with. And so, um, you know, I think that in some instances, uh, it, people aren't aware of it. And this one, I don't think that was the case. So, uh, is that something? Uh, uh, this is going to make him uh, sign what, whatever I need to sign to get a continuance. I do think that a conversation, or at least uh, if I send uh, Ward Welcome a, a handful of questions about. Uh, what he understood the permitting process was. He's built whole houses in the Amherst area. So I, 
I'm really surprised that uh, he's worked on many houses in the uh, historical district as well. Um, so this does come as a bit of a surprise to me. And he's the one that told me about this meeting um, and asked that I attend. So uh, this is the first time I've been invited to, to talk with you. And I certainly understand your concerns. It's a beautiful neighborhood, and my house is right on the, the northern entrance of the Sunset Prospect, Lincoln Street, uh, historical district. And I took great pride in my house, and I, I'm pretty pleased with the results. I certainly wasn't trying to cut any corners. I wasn't trying to... Uh, I just wanted to maintain the integrity of of, of what was uh, the way the house has been for decades. Um, I thought I did that. Um, yeah. Uh, so I will. Uh, I guess the question you you want to know is what happened? Why why didn't we contact you sooner? And what efforts were made to contact you? And then. Um, this uh, it, do we have any flexibility with this project and can we amend it without uh, breaking think, the bank? So, yeah, I, mean, I think there's two things one is, or a few things. One is, you know, a written agreement that you'd waive the 60 days to have a certificate issued, and the other one is, you know, more than just war telling us the balusters can't be space differently we'd want to have you know information from the company explaining if they you know additional balusters could be installed and the cost of that and so you know I, I would want to see correspondence with the manufacturer or a representative from the company or something and then also what the cost is because this could have been you know um, caught beforehand and incorporated into the project or not but at least the commission would have had the ability to it would have had a say in the matter. Yes. Right. Exactly. That makes sense. Okay, I, I agree to those things. Do, do I draft the uh the waiver? No, well, we have a we have a generic form. I that. can I'll send Ward the generic form and he can pass it along. Okay. Okay. Nate, do we need to take any more action as a commission to continue this or is that sufficient no we need a motion and a vote to continue it to a time and date certain so okay do i have a motion to continue this to a time and date certain i think the date would be november mm, but let's just say uh late november mm. no, we yeah, have to say we have to say actually like a, november a 20th certain. at 3 p.m uh, november 20th that's a monday that works for everyone okay uh, i won't be here but uh, i'm not going to be here all next month so Okay, uh, so do I do I have a motion to continue this to November twentieth? I so move. Uh, yes. Second. Uh, all right. Uh, Betty. Yes. Bruce. Yep. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Nicole. Yes. Steve. Yes. Karen. Yes. Rita, did you? I think, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, we have passed this motion and we will continue it to November 20th at 3 p.m. Thank you, uh, Edwin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Right. The next one uh, is for, uh, was it 156 Fearing or 156 Sunset? Is there sunset. Sun, anyone representing? All right. Catherine, you'll be promoted to panelist or you'll be asked to be invited. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, thank you for coming to our meeting. Of course, happy to be here. Um, I'm a property manager with Vertex Real Estate. We manage the property. Um, I did invite the um, contractor uh, to be present, so he was given the link, but I 
he might not be he might not be here if he didn't raise his hand I he the odds are he might not be here um I did prepare a small presentation uh so I can share my screen um if that would be acceptable I don't know if it hold on yeah. I think if you try um try now okay should be able to share and Shane Shane it's Shane uh Miller is he correct yeah he was the one who put the the fence in. So let me. Right, Shane, I'll promote you to panelists as well. Right, that's visible for me. Okay, great. Um, so uh, here's a just a so I do want to say the the fence has already been erected. I'm sure if you've um, gone by and taken a look at, at this point, it, uh, it it did escape my notice um, here on our end that the uh, the contractor had not uh, gone through the appropriate channels. Um, so I do want to apologize on Vertex's behalf that we didn't cross our T's and dot our I's. Um, but I do want to give you the brief description of the work, um, as well as the materials, and I have some photos as well, and we kind of go over the intention of the fence and the reason for the construction. Um, so the um, from the diagram, six inch or six foot height uh, fence, four foot back from the road with a 30 inch buffer. Um, and then it, we went with for a stockade fencing um, to match what was already present on the property. And I do have some photos of some of the present stockade fencing that already exists. Um, and here are also some of the product literature, um, the pressure treated panels, there are spruce, um, as well as the posts, which are yellow pine. Um, and I believe this was sent along in the permit as well as the application um, with the historical committee. So you should have a copy of this as well. Um, this is the existing fencing that exists. This is over by the parking area on the property. Obviously, it's a little bit more weathered, so it is a slightly different color than you know what was newly erected. Um, but our intention was to match what was already pre-existing um, that exists kind of on the property as is. And um, the intention of the fence. Um, so we border three permanent Amherst residents, year-round residents. Um, I believe Cal uh, Councilwoman Jennifer Todd has a property there. Bill and Connie Gillen. Are well known in the community as well as Jesse Johnson, who um, inherited that house from his uh, parents who passed or his father who passed recently. Um, there were some concerns since we do have student tenants about crossing the property line, um, just general concerns, uh, noisiness, that type of thing. Um, we've been working really hard to foster a good relationship with the, the neighbors here kind of going forward. And we thought a fence uh, would be a great way to introduce an element of separation and privacy uh, between our student tenants and the permanent residents who share that property line. Um, so that was the intention of the fence. Um, there is some natural um, bushes kind of towards the back of the property, but this would add just another layer um, to ensure that there was no, you know, there's more of a separation between our tenants and, um, you know, the existing permanent, permanent year-round residents who, who reside on the street with them. Um, so here is the fence. This is the shows this area from the street where it's back. Uh, you can see where it transitions from the four foot to the six foot, um, as well as just the um, it, there's no stain or anything on the the fence as of right now. Um, it's just the pressure treated the wood. Um, I believe John Thompson did take a look at this um, a little while back, closer to when it was erected. Um, and they did make, uh, the contractor did pull it a little further back from the road per his request. So that's already been completed um, just to be in line with the 30 inches, the 30 inches back from the road. And then here's towards the back of the fence. It does kind of go along the length of the property and then ends at some of the natural uh, foliage that sort of separates, um, kind of separates some of the, the back area of the property and the adjacent properties as well. Um, so that is uh, kind of the entirety of the project. This was uh, planned in, you know, closely after discussing with the neighbors. So our intention here was to um, just to create a, a better atmosphere overall for the neighborhood, um, to make sure that the permanent residents didn't feel intruded upon um, by our tenants. Um, 
obviously we're, we, you know, we want to make sure that um, as much as, you know, it, you know, as much as we want to preserve the historical integrity of the area, we'd also like to make sure that it's a comfortable and um, livable space for everybody involved. Um, so that was the, the intention of the fence. Um, and again, I do want to apologize. The, uh, I was not aware that, um, you know, I was not aware that the uh, the contractor, I believe he's based out of Ware, and I don't think he's worked in Amherst before. Um, so I was not aware that he, I think there was a miscommunication between us about, um, you know, this needing to come across uh, your awareness first. Um, so that would be kind of, um, and please let me know if you'd like me to move to any slides, but that would be sort of the general outline of uh, our intentions and, and what was completed here. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to hear now from the commissioners what their feelings are about this fence. Uh, Bruce. Um, uh, I, I think it uh, it's, seems like, a, I mean, it's hardly a historical thing, uh, the, these fences and so forth, and but it's matching something that was there um, it probably hasn't been there for a huge long time, but it's it's a uh, it's 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 consistent with what's there, and I think that probably is a basis that's reasonable. The only thing that I would I don't know whether we can ask, but if it had come to us before it was built, I might have uh, paid some attention to the transition between the four foot and the six foot. It's it's a simply a, a dramatic, uh, abrupt uh, step up, and. And the way this is usually done is there's an incline uh, from the uh, lower level to the so that 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 rail that just comes straight out and ends in uh, in space the 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 upper rail on the last section of fence would be made to slope down and uh, about into the top of the lower rail at just behind the the four foot high post and then the uh, stockade fencing would be trimmed. Uh, accordingly so it would gradually uh, go up like a on a slope yes exactly just like that um uh, that would be the only thing from my point of view that i would uh, have asked to see differently and that would have been my opinion at the time thank you i certainly agree with you <laughs> it looks very strange the way it abruptly jumps up and it doesn't follow the lay of the land which actually does go downhill rather than up. So. Yeah. Right, and we are, are thoughts... happy to make amendments as well. Um, if you feel that, um, that that would be a pretty simple fix to adjust a couple boards to make a smoother transition, that is something we're more than happy to take care of. Uh, other thoughts from other commissioners? Greta's got a hand up. I'm sorry, I can't see everybody, Greta. Yeah, I, I agree with Bruce and Nancy. I think it looks really awkward. And since it would be a really easy fix, I suggest that. Um, I appreciate that you used spruce, that you used wood. It also looks a little raw to me. Now, I know that the understanding is that you put the nice side facing your neighbors. But I wondered if the side facing the road could be made to look less raw. I don't know if anybody has any ideas on that. But I definitely mm -hmm. think the transition should be changed. But, and I appreciate the idea that it will prevent people from walking through the neighbor's yard. It's a big one. Yeah. Other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, you know, would the post be cut to match the top rail? I mean, that's difficult once installed. Um, you know, I'm not, yeah, I don't, I don't have any other suggestions. I was going to just, I was going to share my screen quickly. I took some pictures that were in the packet. So here it is from the street. Um, you know, here it is from, you know, when you're approaching on the street. So with the vegetation on the neighboring property, I know we, we have to exclude vegetation because it could be taken down, but when it, there is foliage, it's, it is um, not very visible. So it's mostly visible from, you know, the property side, uh, you know, only once you go by it, it's really not that visible. So, you know, this is, this is the extent of it uh, from front to back.
Other comments? Uh, Betty. Um, I think it's fine. I don't have any uh, comments on it other than that, um, you know, the meeting of the four and the six um, heights was abrupt. And if you can fix that, that'd be terrific. Do we need to put that into some as one of the conditions or does it, do we just um, accept that they're going to do that? Uh, no, it needs to be written into uh, the condition of the certificate. Okay. Are there public uh, comment? Uh, there's somebody, Shane Millier, who would like to speak. I was thinking from the uh, from the three people. Well, uh, I know what Hill was here for, but uh, before we were to make a motion or something, uh, is there is somebody in the public who wants to uh, make a comment that might affect uh, the outcome of things? Nate, we can't hear you. Wants to raise their hand. I don't. Yeah, sure. it appears it appears not. Uh, that being the case, uh, I will move uh, that uh, the uh, uh, the application for offence that uh, and that Nate, you can insert the address as uh, uh, fearing um, uh, found consistent, etc., with the uh, the goals and the the the, 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 the provisions of the. Uh, uh, local historic district commission uh, uh, bylaws, and that uh, we uh, approve uh, a certificate of of uh, appropriateness uh, conditioned on the uh, the fence transition between the four and the six be uh, made less abrupt uh, by uh, uh, by cutting the. Uh, the fencing to uh, an angle uh, and in, uh, to, to creating an incline to transition between the height differential. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, all right. Uh, take this to a vote. Then, uh, Karin? Yes. Frida? Yes. Uh, Betty? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Steve? Uh, yes. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Uh, and I approve also. So uh, we will grant you that certificate with the proviso that uh, the uh, transition be fixed. Gotcha. We, we will make that amendment. Um, when we do make that amendment, would you just want um, images just uploaded to the online the purporting? Uh, portal just for your review would that be the the best way to submit that over to you guys what are your thoughts Nate? yeah that'd be fine if you just uploaded it through the open gov software okay well well we will schedule that out to be amended um, and then when we have some photos and some images of the amendment um, I'll, I'll submit that for your review okay uh, thank mm -hmm. you Catherine for coming to the meeting and for sure. sharing with us your plan for your time what else do we have, Nate? Uh, that was it. Um, I think, you know, like I mentioned, there's a few other applications waiting. That would be heard in November. Um, I don't have an update on the bylaw. Uh, that's something we still can work on. Um, you know, East Amherst CPA proposal was submitted. And that's, you know, now it will be under consideration by the committee. Um, if Steve had submitted it. Uh, so I, that, I'm not sure there's any other announcements or anything. All right. So uh, we've established that we will meet again on November 20th at 3 p.m. Oh, so move. I can't come on November 20th, so. Okay. Sorry. I can, I can be here, but I'm going to need to do a bus pickup. So like whatever voting, if you need for quorum, I probably got to leave here like 340. All right. And again, I won't be here. So okay. you have to schedule without me. Yeah, as long as you have a quorum, you know, um, for for 45 minutes or an hour, that would be fine. Um, you know, we can always continue something or, you know, 
Um, hopefully the Fearing Street one comes back and it's pretty straightforward. The other one is uh, another fence um, in, um, on, in, on North Prospect, which I think will be um, pretty straightforward as well. Um, you know, there's other things happening, um, you know, outside compressors. There isn't a big project um, necessarily, but, you know, small changes. Okay. Good. Can I ask one quick question? So, Nate, are we moving ahead with the parking um, amendment, you know, changes for the bylaws? That is moving ahead, though, right? Yeah, I'll bring language in November. Yeah, I mean, it's something the building commission and I are looking at. So we've okay. we've um, we have draft language. We've been going back and forth a little bit, uh, but that is something we'd like to add, uh, as well as you know, defining um, a structure to include, you know, like I said, a drainage or other engineered engineering solutions you know so because what we're seeing right are um i mean it kind of captures it now but just we just want to clarify right if someone puts in an overflow structure that's concrete and fiberglass that that actually is a structure and so um the way the structure is defined in the bylaw it, it kind of it says a bunch of things but we want to just call out a few others just so that it's also to help an applicant know so that they're not interpreting, you know, what is an artifact, an edifice, or you know, whatever, whatever, whatever words we're using, right? Um, it's clear that these things are considered structure. So it's not just like a we have a pretty blanket statement, um, and so we just wanted to add some phrases to that definition. Um, okay, checking. Do we have any other old business or new business needs to come up? I don't think so. Um, I did reach out uh, because Bruce is remaining on the commission, um, but you know his his uh, he's here, but maybe he he wouldn't be at, at some point. And the uh, so I reached out to the Western Mass Society of Architects, or I forget their acronym or what they're called, but they will put it in a newsletter, which may have gone out recently asking if there was anyone from Amherst who would want to be interested in the um, this commission. And so typically mm -hmm. we we have to seek a registered or a licensed architect. And then if that doesn't work, we could um, bring someone else on. But, you know, Bruce is remaining on the commission, even though his terms expired. The bylaw says that and it's it's allowed. But, you know, if we had someone who was could take take Bruce's place, I think he's mentioned before that he would he would step off. And so we're trying to you know, we're initiating that search, it becomes difficult when someone's practicing and they live in town. And then there's a lot of times where they might have to recuse themselves or not be involved in review. And so it just, it's actually difficult to find someone <laughs> that meets the I've criteria. Out to four, I've interviewed four different architects um, in preparation and at first they're interested and then, you know, it, it, you know the people that they're going up against are the people they want to be hired by. So it's really right. hard. Yes, yeah, uh, we lost without Bruce. I don't know. We don't, uh, you, Bruce. You don't have any willingness. You don't want to. I totally understand, but you don't want to do it anymore. Or, I mean, if you could get another term. Oh, uh, I, I'm willing. I just um, think that there ought to be turnover on committees a little bit, at least. I mean, every so often you see people who've been chair of things for twenty years, and you. You, it's doesn't no, do I, the I totally committee understand. any good. Just, yeah, I can. Name your you expertise has, sorry, your, your expertise has been really useful on this committee, Bruce. So thank you for continuing to serve. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, no, we'd be lost without you. Well, that's nice to hear, but well, I'm good for the moment. Good, thank you. Uh, do we have a a motion to adjourn? Uh, yes, I usually in initiate that by clicking the leave button. But uh... <laughs> Hilda, so Hilda's raised her hand. Oh, oh, really? Just okay. now, Hilda, you can unmute yourself. Now, supposed to be public comment, I gather, and I I have a comment that's not exactly what you want to hear, but I have a terrible time writing up accurately what happens at these meetings. So this one went by slowly and I could get lots of pictures. But I've gone online for historical commission last week and this one this week, and there have been no packets posted. And obviously you people had all the information, so there is a packet. How are we going to solve this problem if the press gets accurate information from you guys? 
So my screen's shared. Is that visible for everyone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we I the packet gets posted. You have to if you go to the I commission. Put there. Yep. Yeah, you sent the link and then you go here. I know. And there then, was nothing. I didn't get down. to that. All right, go down to 921. That's the last. Oh uh, yes, I had the same one. problem, Hilda. No, but it's, I had the same problem. You just start at the top. <laughs> yeah. It it yeah, it's, it's, at the top. Yeah, I, I couldn't find it either. Oh, oh. Yeah. It was hard for me. It took me a while to figure that out. I can't. Too. Uh, yes. I couldn't. Me the way our software, web software works, you can't. Um, <laughs> I couldn't figure out a way to put it down at the bottom. It you know goes through. No, because everybody else does. So then you can find it. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. It's. Uh, they they really ought to understand nesting. But I will. Um, you know, but I mean, last week's meeting went by so fast, I couldn't get any pictures that were any good. That's the, the historical commission. Had that one been posted? Mm -hmm. yep. It was there? I'll have to look more carefully. But I will, yeah. My I mean, age is showing. Please excuse it. No, but you got, you, um, yeah, I, I want to, um, I was going to, I'll email Athena because the council might post it differently so that you don't have to, you know, the way most committees work, you have to go to the document center and you have to click through all the folders to get to the meeting folder. So even if there was a link sent, it only brings you to the generic one. You have to go down to 2023 and then the date and everything. Yeah. There might be yeah. a way that you go right to the meeting itself and then we could post it on um, like on the commission's website or something. But um, I know we tried that with the planning board and it didn't work. And so I don't, you know, I don't know if it's the software we use or, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll look into it because I, I do think it would al also be easier for the members. <laughs> the problem with, with the planning board, I don't know whether it's fixed or not. All the documents are in one big long thing. So you can't easily get to what you're looking for. But I don't know if that's still true. Well, I, I, I gotta go. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I will, I will, I will leave now. Okay. Uh, uh, you with me that my brain just can't keep up with technology. I think we've had a motion to adjourn. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, I'll look into that though, just to see if there's a way it can be posted differently. Um, but it might be a limit of what our the software does. Not, yeah. You don't send it separately to each person. They go to the website to find it. I'll say that the packet's posted and I send them a link to that generic oh. one to click through it themselves. So the link you sent today, Hilda, to Chris and I, that's just the one I send out to the commission and they have to click through it themselves. I don't, there's no other way to get there. Um, there's usually a link from the town calendar that brings you to the website where you can click most recent packets or whatever. Yeah, I, 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 so I'll look into that to see if there's a different way we can post it. Okay, are we ready to adjourn, uh, Steve? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, Nicole? Betty? Yes. Uh, Karen? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.